very much. I'm very happy to be here this morning and to talk to you about concussions, which is something that uh, we've all heard a lot about. So there's a saying that goes, if you've seen one concussion, you've seen one concussion. Well, the first time I heard that, I had to say it to myself again. So I'll say it to you again. If I've seen one concussion, I've seen one concussion. Well, taken literally, that means that every single concussion is different. So as a researcher, we've really known that for years. Actually, doctors know that. Parents know that. So, so what's the big problem? Um, so where are we? Why is concussion so confusing? Well, part of the reason is, is because our brains are all different. They're not all the same. And every concussion is different, too. You can get a concussion in a car accident, playing sports, even falling down at home. Every single brain is different. So what exactly is a concussion, and why don't we know more about it? Well, a concussion is a mild brain injury. So it is a brain injury. Results from an impact to the head. So anything that you can impact your head results in neurological symptoms memory problems, confusion, balance problems, forgetfulness. So we've known about the relationship between getting your head hit and neurological function for some time. Well, for over a century, we've known this, ever since we started ramming our heads together on purpose. So the first football game the first college football game was in the late 19th century. I think everybody knows back then they wore leather helmets. And this wasn't such a good idea as we know now. But they didn't know that. So there was many deaths, some serious injuries. Then eventually that led to the use of hard helmets and different rules as we all know today. Um, around the same time, in the early 20th century, boxing became more and more popular. Um, it was as popular then as football is today. Soon medical reports started to emerge, though, that showed a relationship between the impact to the head and brain damage. And then we all have heard about traumatic brain injury and war. Well, traumatic brain injury has been a war wound for many, many years, many centuries. In the last conflicts, traumatic brain injury was known as the signature wound of the war. Um, but perhaps the most the most telling and the biggest shakeup to the community has been the finding of degeneration in professional football players' brains. It's been 15 years since we first saw this. And we've seen player after player, we've seen this discovered in their brain. So, so now there's a lot of talk about concussion. You hear it in the media, you hear it all the time. So what's going on? Um, you know, we hear about concussion protocols. What's a concussion protocol? Does my kid really need to be doing that tackling technique or that tackling technique? Um, are we going to get rid of football? Well, um, I'm not sure that that's the way, that, that's the way it's going to go. But uh, what are we doing? What are we doing about it? Why aren't we doing better? Are we doing any better than we were 10, 15, 20 years ago? Some might say yes. We no longer say, oh, he got his bell rung, or how many fingers am I holding up? But I'm here to tell you that, no, I don't think we're doing that much better than we were 20 years ago. So what's the big deal? Why is it so difficult to detect this mild brain injury? Sports announcers do it all the time. Well, sometimes it's obvious that someone's had a brain injury, and sometimes it's not so obvious. What we want to know are the ones that aren't so obvious. So, and even when it's obvious, sometimes it can still be messy. Dehydration, for example, that can mimic the signs of a concussion. It can lead to imbalance problems and this and that. So, what is this? Well, I call this a signal-to-noise problem. Okay? We have the big signal, the real signal is concussion. And then we have the noise. We have all the other noise, like dehydration. So when you have a really large signal like you would for loss of consciousness. Everybody knows that if you see a football player laying down during a game or a soccer player, they probably have a concussion. So there, the signal, you can see it among the noise. But most of the time, you have small signals and a lot of noise. Dehydration, different medical conditions, different medications. And this is where the confusion comes in. 
So it's confusing, and now it's also very messy. Okay, so what I'm here to talk to you today about is to try to convince you that we can use data science to clear up this messiness, clear up this confusion, and move forward. So what if we were able to say that you have a brain fingerprint? Everybody in this room and everybody watching, they have unique features about their brain. So if they have a particular situation that they think is a concussion, we know what their fingerprint looks like and we know how bad their concussion is. What if I could say your concussion score is a 9.2? You've had a mild traumatic brain injury. You've suffered a contusion to your frontal brain that's causing your memory problems. But the good news is that your blood work and your imaging work and all of your other signs, they tell us that you need to rest for a few days, you need to avoid any heavy or strenuous activity for two weeks, and if you get at least eight hours of sleep a night, like any of us get that anymore, you have a 98% chance of a full recovery. Or you have a concussion score of 7.1. You've suffered a mild brain injury to your parietal cortex that's causing you all these problems that you're having today. But because of your medical history of frequent migraines, your three previous concussions, and all of your tests, your balance problems are most, are, you're gonna have a 20% chance of continuing those balance problems and develop dizzy problems. And you have, a, you have a, now your risk for chron chronic traumatic encephalopathy or CTE, degeneration of the brain, that's gone up from five to 10%. So I'm here to tell you that this is possible. It's possible for each of us to have our own profile in the unlikely event that we hit our heads and have a concussion. So how, how are we gonna do this? How is it that we can, uh, we can have a personalized diagnosis? Well, I think everybody in this room has probably heard of personalized medicine. There's a lot of research into cancer treatments, tailoring cancer treatments, and doing genetic, um, genomic sequencing to see what your genetic risks are for a certain disease. But in the world of concussion, there's a lot of research. There's a lot of confounding research. There's a lot of conflicting research. And we've been very slow to adopt this concept in concussion medicine. There's international guidelines that have been put out by experts, yet less than 10% of US physicians are using those guidelines. So they're taking lots of uh, data points. They're taking lots of information but it's still very messy. We still don't know what to do with all of, this, all of this messiness. So typically, concussion diagnoses are based on just a few data points, a few symptoms, a clinical exam, your doctor's experience, of course, but it's still just a few data points. So for example, if you had a small hit to the head, that means that that's a low risk, and you have a low chance of having a concussion. Obviously, if you have a higher hit, a larger hit, you have a higher risk and a higher chance of getting concussion. Well, each clinical symptom, each clinical test that they do is going to tell the doctor something about your risk and your chances for suffering a brain injury or what your outcome is going to be. Okay? But in reality, we each, each and every one of us has dozens and even hundreds of signals. We have a brain fingerprint. Okay, so we need to be taking all of these factors. We need to know how hard the hit was, how many hits you've had in the past. Maybe this was just a one-time hit, you're not an athlete. We need to know what medications you're on, what your medical history is, what your diet is, and so on. So we can take all of these data points and we can use algorithms to create personalized fingerprints that can allow us to have diagnoses, and treatment plans that are just for you and your brain. So this is a, a data-driven approach, we call this. And what we can do this is we can have individual plans for everybody. So say a 14-year-old has a hit in a football game. So based on his symptoms, he has a certain type of concussion. A woman falls from her bike, hits her head. She has another set of history 
facts and conditions and symptoms. And this is a different subtype of injury. And then we have a man who plays soccer on the weekends in an adult league. He really can't remember if he had any concussions as a kid, but he has migraines, and his migraines get worse when he plays soccer. But he doesn't have a concussion based on his test. So how, how do we get there? How do we get to this point? Well, we need to demand personalized health for our brains. We need to demand this like we would for chemotherapy, like we would for genetic risks. We need to participate in research. Well, there's a lot of research we need to do. We need to support crowdsourcing our data because we need all those data points to create these algorithms. We need to insist on concussion education. We need to ask our doctors about the latest concussion guidelines. Okay? We're not in the dark room anymore. Okay? What are the latest guidelines? Insist that they keep up with that. We need to insist that our schools, all of our schools, have athletic trainers and school nurses. But we need to participate in sports. We need to know our risks. Because data is power. And the more data you have and the more you know, the more that you can make decisions. So together, we can get from having very messy, messy diagnosis, even misdiagnosis. We don't want to have misdiagnosis. We want to get it right. Okay? So we have all this noise, and we have a lot of misdiagnosis. But together, by using these data science techniques and by demanding that we have this type of education that for our doctors in our schools, together, we can come up with precision medicine for our brains and avoid the concussion confusion. Thank you.